What going to a therapist is really like. Subtitle or subtext. Why you should go to a therapist. Now, of course, there is, are some uh, barriers to entry. Maybe you have to pay for a therapist or maybe you have to go on a long waiting list to go to a therapist. But I suppose I'll talk about therapy in a number of ways. One-on-one -on -one therapy and group therapy. That number is two. I've just counted it. See this little rabbit guy whose ears is made of fingers and face is made of hand? That's how I work it out. One, two. Individual therapy, group therapy. Lots of group therapy free of charge. We don't have that economic barrier. Most of the therapy I've been fortunate enough to have, particularly as an adult, since I've been earning money, although in the early part of my life I was getting some free therapy, were, uh, it is paid for. But what I tell you is this. <sighs> Many of us don't address the deep motivations and fears that are secretly governing our lives. I am fond of saying when talking about the 12-step program that I use to uh, which I have been given and taught to help with my own mental health flaws and failings, that you don't make a choice between having a program and not having a program. You make a choice between a conscious program and an unconscious program. If you don't have a conscious program, you will definitely have an unconscious program. Your decisions and actions will be obviously influenced by the programming and conditioning that you received throughout your life as a result of trauma, education, familial circumstances. And if you are unaware, if you are not engaged in a journey of understanding and discovery, then these will be the dominant forces in the actions that you take. Even something as simple as the type of partners that you choose, how you behave in a relationship, your ability to stay in a relationship, be faithful, your attitude towards self-care, grooming, nutrition, all of this is a form of programming. Now, my belief is that your programming can be mended and altered. We are, to a degree, of course, a project, product of biology, but also of our cultural conditioning. The cultural conditioning component we can alter and the biology aspect we can somewhat take advantage of. In a relationship with a therapist, I'll talk about some of the therapists I've had. Uh, I, there's one therapist who's an acupuncturist. She gives me amazing, in addition to the fantastic acupuncture, she gives me incredible insight and wisdom, powerful perspectives because of her own life experience. And she's very unafraid, this woman. I write about her in my book, Mentors, actually, which is a pretty good book if you want it. Um, you can probably get it in Oxfam now, or you might find a copy somewhere by, by a bus shelter. Uh, I talk about her and how she very sort of forthright, for example, when I was going through a very difficult breakup, she says, how are you going to cope with it? I goes, I don't know, probably sleeping around. And she says, well, what is all this spiritual stuff you go on about if the minute you face crisis, what you turn to is addiction as opposed to recovery? What an incredible piece of advice from a therapist whose primary job, who in this case, is acupuncture, uh, you know, the working on the invisible meridians that have been established to be there through, you know, Chinese philosophy, shall we say. Another therapist that I have, very good in relationships, very good at helping me to listen and understand, in my case, the uh, partners that I've been living with. This woman, she's very good at helping me to recognise that I oughtn't have a combative attitude when it comes to resolving the problems that one necessarily and ordinarily encounters in a relationship. She has shown me how to be compassionate and uh, I would say um, empathetic and sometimes just quiet when dealing with another person's needs, a particular person that you share your life with quite intimately. Also, I write about her in the book Mentors. The therapist that I see most these days, this person very good because there's different types of therapy and I don't know enough about the various disciplines like, you know, Jungian, Freudian, Gestalt. You know, there's all sorts of different words for it. You know, and I, I don't know enough about it from a, obviously from a professional perspective. But what, what I do know is that at different points of, in your life, different types of therapists might be required. And like that old adage, when the student is ready, the master will appear. The type of therapy that you are intuitively drawn towards might be revealing. But as long as you're being sort of authentic with and honest with yourself. My uh, therapist that I see these days, he very, very, I would say, male. What I mean by male is a degree of stability, solidness, uh, assertiveness, not to say that those are uh, traits that couldn't exist in any gender. I'm saying that they're perhaps 
customarily in the culture that I'm talking from regarded as male traits, just to unpack that piece of terminology a little bit. He's very, um, I would say, mystical, again, in a manner that doesn't seem air-based, but earth-based, a kind of sort of ability to evaluate quickly. The therapy of this man, who's also written about in my book, Mentors, he is looking, can I, when I go to him, do you know how I do it? I know the spikes in energy that I've experienced since I last spoke to him. Moments that I was afraid, moments that I was angry, moments that I felt jealous or lustful, not necessarily happy or content unless I think that those moments of happiness or, or contentment are indicative of me doing something right strategically, not just the result of circumstance, you know? So, and also by its nature, therapy is about amending problematic behaviours, although the reinforcement of positive behaviours is part of it. So I feel that there is information that is valuable, obviously, in these moments of fear. I was really frightened, this thing happened and it scared me, or uh, this confrontation happened and I felt very inadequate. Sometimes they're pretty trivial things that provoked a large reaction. As they say, if it's hysterical, it's historical. If you have an experience that should be about four out of ten, like someone you know being rude to you in traffic or whatever, and it causes you to go mad with rage, then it's obviously provoked a, by definition a deeper uh, response, a historic problem. So like I'll talk to him about anything like that and he uses that to help me create or identify, depending on your perspective, a meaningful narrative in my life. My personal uh, understanding of my life is that, you know, that I was trying to create an identity like most of us. I wanted to be successful like most of us. I achieved a degree of that success like most of us and then recognised that it wasn't valuable. I think you can, in whatever discipline or direction your life is going, you might experience some variation of that. And the, the function of the therapy that I'm currently undertaking is how do I become the person that I am required to be due to the circumstances of my life? And are the circumstances of my life an authentic expression of the person that I am? Am I ready to be a father? These are the kind of questions I was asking sort of five years ago, six years ago. And of course, thankfully, the outcome was positive in that I feel that I am ready and now I have become a father. So he helps me deal with the mystery. He helps me deal with things that I'm not fully aware of, or at least I'm peripherally aware of, and I need to actualize them. This thing frightens me. This thing makes me excited. This that makes me animated, afraid. This makes me go numb. He helps me through his experience as a therapist and a, as a man with a comparable background to identify and use, the mobilize, utilize these events and these feelings. The other type of therapy I've had a lot of is group therapy and I'm a 12-step therapy person and in these traditions you have uh, often a mentor or sponsor. The sponsors that I've have, had have made an incredible contribution to my well-being and the current, I would say, sponsor, which is a therapeutic role, he a very powerful person that's able to help me. You know, he, he has a life that I aspired to. He was successful in ways that I wanted to be successful in that he had a long and successful marriage, has uh, like children, like four kids, and like he's able to hold his shit together in the world of business and stuff, you know, and I thought, oh, this is, these are traits that I need to learn, that I need to aspire to. So mentorship for me is part of therapy, particularly when housed in a 12-step context. All these relationships that I've described for there, remember? The acupuncturist, the sort of couples counsellor, should we say, the personal therapist and the 12-step mentor. These relationships are all ongoing in my life by coincidence, two females, two males, and they are, uh, I would say, a necessary component of ongoing growth when I experience fear, when I experience anger, when I experience disappointment, I'm not on some dreadful abyss. I have coordinates to aim for. Usually I'm basing the decisions I make and the way that I respond to the challenges I face in my life on the experience of other people. These are pretty worldly folk and you'll find that such people are, don't really give advice, they more give you the benefit of their experience. That I would, endure, I would, if you can get into therapy one way or another, I would recommend it because it is a tool for growth. There, it should, if there is a stigma around it, there shouldn't be because how can you understand you? It's not a facsimile for friendship. I suppose you could 
in anthropologically you could say well what is a therapist is it like a medicine woman or a witch doctor or a wise elder and I would say perhaps it is some version of all of those and I don't think it's an indication that you don't have strong enough or robust enough familial relationships or social relationships because I think that them being outside of that sphere is by its nature beneficial because everyone else has got skin in the game you know your friends they know you but they sort of love you and they're affected similarly with your family you want the objective input with someone that will help you to understand what what is it that you want who are you trying to be where are you trying to get to like you want someone who has the authority and the perspective to be able to say that's you're going in the wrong direction i think you should consider the possible consequences of that type of action or when i did that this is what happened to me it's altered me radically as a person. I think it's pretty obvious, I would say, that without therapy of both an individual and a group nature, I wouldn't be able to live without drink and drugs. I would continue to work the old program. Therapy is a way of awakening yourself, of actualizing yourself, of realizing a more positive version of all the different yous that you could potentially become and preventing the inertia of your own neurosis or psychosis or trauma just carrying you wherever it wants to because where it will carry you is a kind of annihilation and some people have the kind of genius to self-actualize to self-awaken you know, ama you know like sort of the uh, indian hugging saint you know, and probably other spiritual teachers. I'm not sure there are some people that have a particular genius that wouldn't perhaps point to mentors, teachers, therapists. But I say that if you're like me, a regular person with regular person problems, that a therapist is a pathway to self-actualization. And if unless you're happy and content, you have no real choice but to consider pursuing this pathway.